scoring record. Tonight's international friendly between the United States and Germany is presented by Panasonic Tough Pad. They're soaked, but they are enthusiastic. The teams ranked number one and number two in the world will go head-to-head -head at Rentschler Field here in East Hartford, Connecticut tonight. It is a rainy night, but we're looking forward to it. Arlo White with you, Kate Margraff, who played over 200 times for the US women's national team. And we're joined on the left-hand side of me, as she will be on the left-hand side of midfield tonight, by Megan Rapino. Megan, got to ask you first off, lots of people at home will have just have watched that epic semi-final of the yeah. Olympic Games, the 4-3 against Canada. You scored two goals. It's only a few months ago. What are your memories of that now? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, all the goals, I mean, seven goals in one game. Um, poor Sink, a hat-trick by Sink, probably the best game she's ever played, or one of them. Um, fortunately, it wasn't enough, but uh, just amazing, really. It's hard to put into words. Now, when we talked in February, at that point, you weren't even supposed to be in the Olympics. Pia told you, you weren't going to be on the roster. Yeah. What changed in your game? This was the year that you made your name in U.S. soccer. Um, I just I kept battling. I um, always stayed true to what, what I thought I needed to do to get on the field, my style of play. I always thought it was really important to the team. Um, just kept battling, kept battling. Um, you know, at times I think it's, it's good to listen, but I think at times it's good to just know what got you there and, and the reason uh, your talents are recognized. Megan, it's the fan tribute tour, and this is against Germany. It goes up a notch, doesn't it? Number one against number two. Now, you faced them on Saturday in Chicago. It was a 1-1 tie. It ended a 14-match winning run. You know you've got some competition here. Yeah. What did you learn on Saturday that you could take into tonight's game? Uh, I think we need to be a little bit more organized uh, defensively. We got split a couple times, their goal, um, and then there was one more that they should have had in the first half. Um, and offensively, just a little bit more patient. I think we're rushing things. We're not played in, uh, but that's no excuse to make stupid mistakes. Um, just stay patient and, uh, you know, stay with our game. Now, going forward, next year, what do you personally want out of the next coach? Ooh, uh, I mean, I want someone that's, that's going to play a really beautiful style of football. I want us to play that. Um, I want someone that's going to demand a lot out of us, technically, tactically, um, and just thinking of the game, playing a creative style. Jill Ellis is in interim charge. She's been part of the setup at US Soccer for a while now. We chatted to her last night, Megan, and this is where you come in. She says they've got to get the ball wide tonight that they didn't do, you didn't do on Saturday. That's where you come in on the left-hand side. Heather O'Reilly will start on the right. Do you feel that you've got more responsibility out in that field tonight to put service in for the likes of Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, there are two huge big targets up top. Um, I think it's a, a balance of bringing it inside and bringing it outside. Um, getting it wide is good and getting crosses good, but it has to be quality as well. Um, I think we need to switch it up, uh, combine through the middle, and then get us wide in higher areas where we can actually get crosses off. What about the rain out there? It's pouring down. This is great for a winger, oh, isn't no, it? No. You can skin those fullbacks out it's there with that wet surface. Hair. It really is bad for my hair. What do you mean? So, I know. What do you mean? It's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> the unmistakable blonde hair of Megan Rapino. But all the best tonight, Thank and you. thanks for joining us so close to kickoff. Megan Rapino, who will be out on the field tonight for the U.S. women's national team against Germany. We'll have the lineups for you with Russ Thaler and with Kate Margraff in a few moments' time. Don't go away. Number one against number two in the world, the USA against Germany. Welcome back. The rain has done nothing to dampen the mood here in Hartford, Connecticut, as we get you ready for USA and Germany. Coming up following the game, it's Costas tonight, and Bob Costas will sit down with Bobby Valentine in his very first interview since being fired by the Red Sox. His guests also include Jeremy Romanik on the NHL lockout. USA Today columnist Christine Brennan with some strong thoughts on Lance Armstrong and an interview with Vikings punter Chris Cluey who the New York Times has called the NFL's most interesting man. That's coming up right after this game on the NBC Sports Network. It's Costas tonight. And welcome back, everybody. Russ Thaler here with you. And, Kate, it's time now to take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. And let's begin with Jill Ellis's 11. She'll send out for Team USA. 
Well, this entire season, they started out in a 4-4-2. And in the last game, they did not get enough attack up the left-hand side. That falls to number five, Kelly O'Hara, the left back, a converted forward who is so dangerous when she gets in the attacking third. Shannon Fox, number seven, was the best player for the United States on Saturday night because she breaks up passes and she can distribute the ball very, very well. And Alex Morgan up top, number 13. She has been so amazing this season, not only because her dynamic runs, because they're more purposeful. The most explosive player in the game today. And Abby Wambach beside her, of course, Sylvia Nide has an 11 that she'll send out against Team USA. And here's a look. Well, they always play in a 4-2-3-1. And number three, Saskia Bartusiak flustered Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan last game because of her physical nature. She's not slow, but that does not deter her from being one of the world's best center backs. And number six, Simon Laudaire, an all-around complete player, an ankle biter on defense, but she set up the assist for the game-tying goal on Saturday night. Alexandra Pop, number nine, the penalty box princess, according to the German media. Watch for her in the air. She is by far only second in the world to Abby Wambach with her ability to time and put power on the ball. All right, Germany gave USA everything they could handle back on Saturday night in Chicago. So what does Team USA need to do differently then tonight? Well, they can't give up the ball in the midfield so easily. Make Germany earn their chances. Every time they gave it up in the midfield, it was a very, very quick counterattack. All right, the players are just about ready to take the field, so it's time for us to send you high up top and join Arlo White. Russ, thank you very much indeed. The team's readying themselves to enter the arena here at Rentschler Field. The rain has been falling steadily for a good hour or so, creating a nice slick surface. Those strikers will be following in all the shots from the edge of the area, just in case the goalkeepers tonight, two very, very good goalkeepers in Hope Solo and Adine Angara happen to spill a few. The Found Tribute Tour continues for the gold medalist, the United States, against the current European champions, Germany. They will hope to defend their crown in Sweden in Euro 2013. This mini tour for them, part of ramping up for that tournament next year. It will be held in Sweden. The host nation now have Pia Sundhager as their head coach, formerly, of course, of the United States. So the gold medalists, the United States women's national team, face the team ranked number two in the world, Germany. The kickoff is next from East Hartford. A rainy night in East Hartford, the United States women's national team about to take on Germany. Time for the national anthems and its guests first. The anthem of Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Performing the Star Spangled Banner is Ms. Taylor Greenwood.
so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Hope Solo's ready, Abby Wambach is ready, she's scored goal number 147 against Germany at the weekend. National pride at stake for the USA and Germany after the break. Welcome back to today's international friendly between the United States and Germany, presented by Panasonic Tough Pad. East Hartford, Connecticut, a little rainy tonight. Let's head down to Kate Margraff, who earned 201 caps for the US national teams, twice an Olympic gold medalist. She'll be between the benches for us tonight, braving the elements, Kate. Which player should we look out for on either side? Well, you can't miss Abby Wambach from the United States. She's going to get brutalized tonight by the German center backs. They love to play physical. She has to stay on her feet and set play. She is also only 11 goals away from Mia Hamm's record. And for Germany, Anya Mittag, number 11. She scored the game-tying goal on Saturday night, but more importantly, she likes to set play. She comes back off that back line, sits in that seam between the midfield and the defense, and she helps build Germany's attack. Okay, thank you. I feel terrible, Kate. Okay, maybe we swap roles for the second half. You can come up to the warmth of the booth. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Here's tonight's referee, Carol Ann Chenard from Canada. She represented Canada at the London 2012 Olympic Games and we are underway here at Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. These two sides drew 1-1 at the weekend in Chicago. So national pride and something of a decider in this mini-series tonight to be played out over the next 90 minutes. Germany with a late change of playing outfit. They've gone from their traditional white shirts to a red and black number. There's Jill Ellis, interim head coach usually the development director at US Soccer. But she's uh, temporarily replacing Pia Sundhager. Here's Alex Morgan for the first time tonight. That attack ended by four German defenders, and straight away, Morgan was a little bit isolated in attack. Here's Kelly O'Hara. That's a Shannon Bot. She lofts it over, looking for a run, but it's gone through to the goalkeeper, the very experienced Nadine Angerup. And speaking of experience, there's Sylvia Nide, appointed in 2005 as coach of the German national team. They won the World Cup in 2007, Olympic bronze in 2008, but as a midfielder, she scored 48 goals. Here's an early shot again by Alex Morgan, poor distribution by Anger out of the back. And we've seen our first shot of the night here at Rainy Rentschler Field in East Hartford. Alex Morgan having quite a year for the US women's national team. If you watch the epic semi-final from the Olympic Games, the rerun before our live action here, before the game began, you'll have seen that extraordinary winning goal. 122 minutes and 23 seconds to break Canadian hearts at Old Trafford and to send the United States into the gold medal match, which you can see later on on the NBC Sports Network. From Germany for the first time into attack. It was Luisa Wenzig who played that ball out to Marina Feist on the left-hand side. 
Simone Lauder at the byline. The United States are claiming that ball went out of play for a goal kick, but the decision is a corner. It's well played by Simone Lauder, who was instrumental in the German goal at the weekend, eventually scored by Anja Mitter. Doug Solo directing operations from the US goal. Low service into the box. Megan Rapino is over. Corner number two for Germany. Well, already you get to see the creativity of the German side. Instead of just dumping the ball in, they push it back out to try to pull that US defense out a little bit. Serena Feist with the corner kick. Headed clear by Abby Wombach. Back to Feist, though. She's got plenty of time here to measure her cross. Feist. Rapino out to defend. To the edge of the area it goes. Opportunity to a long-range shot here is deflected. In fact, it's not. It just skewed off the side of the boot of Linda Grisonic. There's a serious history between these two sides. One versus two in the world. Germany, one of only two teams to deny the USA victory in 2012 in 26 games. Japan won and drew versus the USA earlier this year. Brissonic. Cuts inside onto the right foot, low drive comes in. Becky Sauerbrunn was there, in for Rachel Bueller tonight in this US starting 11. Four changes from the weekend. Amy Lapelbeck in at right back for Heather Mitz. Lapelbeck is temporarily out of position. They come Germany again towards the edge of the penalty area. So confidence in possession. Loud air, edge of the area, fouled by Kelly O'Hara, and it's a free kick in a very, very dangerous position. Germany is so good at building up play, going from one side to another, and Loud Air with a touch beats O'Hara. O'Hara brings her down a little late to tackle with an ankle biting play. Alexandra Pop is there, number nine, 21 years old. 19 goals in 30 international appearances. She'll fancy this pop, and she has a go, and it's just over the bar. Alexandra Pop is full of confidence. In 2010, she was in the World Cup. She was a leading goal scorer and the MVP. She loves to set up and take the shot. Right now, it goes over the bar. She gets underneath it, but that's not the first time we've seen that this game. It has been very hard for both players to get control of the ball because the ball is so slippery with the rain and the wet surface. Okay, as a defender, a former defender, you played 201 times for the U.S. Women's National Team. Did you like the slick conditions when it was raining? Well, I like the slick conditions because it came down to who's going to win the physical 1v1 challenges because there will be so many more 50-50 balls than normal. But you always have to remember it's always going to go through. You always anticipate the worst-case scenario that someone's going to put their foot up and it's going to slide underneath. And rebounds are critical on all shots, both defensively and offensively for both teams. That ball for Blau there, just a little bit too much on it for Luisa Vinci. One of five members of the Germany under-20 squad from the recent FIFA World Cup Finals. They lost in the final 1-0 to the USA. She gets her fourth international cap tonight. The other four members of that squad are on the bench. Rubino with the throw. What Germany is doing a great job of is integrating the youth with the old. We talked to the head coach today, and she said part of the reason why this lineup has four changes is she's giving a test for these guys to put them in the big environment to see how they do and decide if they want to invest in them for the long term. Lena Gersling was looking down the right-hand side for Anja Mietag. They play a 4-2-3-1 formation, the Germans. Mietag was the highest striker at Toyota Park on Saturday. The goal scorer, a very neat left-footed finish. Tonight, she's in behind Alexandra Pop in that sort of floating, attacking central midfield role. Shannon Box. Now Kelly O'Hara. Becky Sauerbrunn. Here's Christy Rampone. 271st international cap tonight. Only 81 now behind Christine Lilly's US record of 352. Rampone. Nicely through to box, but that's too heavy. 
already, this is an improvement on the U.S. games from Saturday night. You have Becky Sauerbrum, number four, the left center back, playing into Megan Rapino, playing it into that gap, followed by Shannon Box, then running into the gap, and Megan Rapino, number 15, played that seam. That's something you'll see the Germans do all game long. They don't play to feet, they play to seams, and the Americans are taking a page from their book. Morgan, Rapino, looking for the feet of Wombat that time. Such an ebullion character, Megan Rapino. We spoke to her during the pre-game show. Here's Christy Rampone. It was fascinating, Kate, talking to Abby Wombat yesterday and having followed this team throughout the Olympic Games all the way to their gold medal glory. Every time you mention to Abby Wombat the prospect of her closing in on Mia Hamm's international goal-scoring record, not just the US goal-scoring record, but the all-time international record of 158 goals. She always says that records aren't important to her. She scored 147 after a minute and 47 seconds at the weekend. So she said that wasn't still doesn't rate that highly in her list of priorities, but there's a record she is chasing now with Alex Morgan. They've got 46 goals between them in this calendar year. Box slides it through towards O'Reilly, and O'Reilly's got possession here. Alex Morgan points it where she wants it, and is it a corner kick? Yes, it is. That's what Heather O'Reilly can provide. She provides a penetration like nobody else on the right side for this team. She loves to go wide, and once she gets going, she has incredible five to 10 yard bursts. She earns the United States so many corner kicks because the scenario is just like that. Rapino with the corner kick. The record, by the way, is 55 in a calendar year. Michelle Akers and Karen Jennings in 1991. Oh, it's a volley on the far post, and it's just wide. Shannon Box thought she'd scored, and I think 15,000 people in Rensselaer Field thought the same. An excellent service off the cross to the far post. This is vintage Shannon Box. She has found her timing again this so far towards the end of this year, and she takes a one-time touch and hits it, unfortunately, on the side. Doesn't get the, quite the angle that she wanted, positioning her body so she could see more of the goal, and it goes wide, and Germany has to be thankful that it's not one nothing, and they give up another goal so early in the first half. She drifted into a wonderful position on the far post. It's a free kick, fouled by Lauder on Megan Rapino. Shanna Box with two goals already in the fan tribute tour, including a penalty against the Australians and a 2-1 win in LA. She returned, of course, from injury, that hamstring injury for the gold medal match against Japan. She got injured in the first match, the 4-2 win over France at Hampden Park in Glasgow, Scotland. It was her calming influence that aided the US to goal, but they've given the ball away here. Mitag working against Sauerbrunn. First meaningful touch here to Carly Lloyd, striding down the centre of the field, trying to work it to the left-hand side to Morgan. And here come Germany again. Laude. Sliding challenge from O'Hara. Good skill by Laude. Here comes the cross. It's up by Vincent. The young fullback. Laude. Influential in the early stages. Header comes in. It's a glancing effort. It was Mitag on the end of it. Germany just turning the screw here slightly. Cross comes over. And in the end, it was Pop who sent the ball behind. Well, they play in this 4-2-3-1, which is the formation, but their style is actually to go one side, get it to the flank, have a cross in, and if that doesn't work, go try the other flank and put it in the box for someone like Al Alexander Pop, number nine, Mittag, number 11, who are both so opportunistic in the goal. They can read service so well and time it perfectly to arrive where they can have a great chance and opportunity. Coming up following the game tonight on the NBC Sports Network, it's Costas tonight. Bob Costas will sit down with Bobby Valentine in his first interview since being fired by the Red Sox. His guests also include Jeremy Roenick on the NHL lockout. John Farrell, of course, introduced today as the new man in the Boston hot seat. So a timely chat with Bobby Valentine.
and follows this match at Rensselaer Field. Nil-nil, 13th minute in the pouring rain. Lena Gerstling read that ball well. And she scampers down the left-hand side. Amy Lapel that in tow. Here's Dabet Pater. Solo is watchful. The ball dropped almost to the right foot of Linda Brisonic, who was ghosting in at the far post. The US gets dispossessed, and Germany once again makes a meal of the air. She looks up by that Peter, serves at far post to Bresnik. Right there, Kelly O'Hara has to look on her back shoulder and to find Bresnik. You cannot leave a player free in the box, especially when you have an even man scenario. The Pelbet and Pop. Pelbet uses her strength to just ease the 21 year old Pop off the ball. Amy LaPelbet is not the fastest player. She is actually a center back, in my opinion, playing out of position on the right hand side due to an injury to Ali Krieger, who plays for a lot of, with a lot of these players in Frankfurt. But that's an example that you don't have to be fast. You just have to use your body to get to the ball first after they make that long touch. Loud air. Vensing. Okay, you played against Germany many times. They didn't qualify for the Olympic Games and they're playing here as they did on Saturdays if they've got a, a point to prove, aren't they? Well, they're very hungry. I talked to Ali Krieger by Skype during the week and she said, you guys, she said, you guys referring to me like I was still on the team. You, the national team has to win. Pop with the cross. Flips header clear by Christy Rampone. And away goes Heather O'Reilly. She needs some support on the right-hand side. Germany coming into this game, we chatted to one or two of their team members, Nadine Angara, the veteran goalkeeper, who was telling us as well that this is a chance for them to make an impact. They see themselves very much as the equals of the United States. Been able to prove that at the Olympic Games. Loud air, right footed drive is deflected away. And it's a corner kick. Well, that's excellent by Louder. Just pick your head up. She had time and space because she's sitting in a seam in a gap and might as well shoot it. With this type of weather, you don't know where the ball is going to go, and they get aided by a deflection to earn themselves a corner kick. Let's try to get available! Hey, There's Wait. Drives it across with the right foot. The header comes in. It's just looped into the hands of Hope Solo. And she looks to get the United States away, straight away. But it was Alex Morgan who was scampering away and nowhere near that clearance. Here come Germany again. The Pelbert is a defender. Heather O'Reilly back to help out as well. Time here for Shannon Box. Simone Lauder here, who's just got hold of the ball again. He's having a huge influence on the run of play at the moment. Experienced 26-year-old, plays for FFC Frankfurt. Here she is again. She scored in the 2007 World Cup final against Brazil. Her header sealed a 2 0 win. Germany world champions in 2003 and 2007. Offside against Pop. They've got a fine pedigree in international women's soccer, the Germans. As we've mentioned, ranked number two in the world. Sylvia Knight, their coach, 48 goals in 111 international appearances. In their first ever international in 1982, they beat Switzerland 5-1 and Sylvia Knight scored two goals. She hasn't missed many internationals in the entire Germany programme since 82. And I think she had a mullet back then too, like most people, from the pictures I've seen. Grisonic. Mittag is the furthest forward this time, and she drives one right foot and gets underneath it this time. Signed for Paris Saint-Germain, Linda Brissonic in July with her fellow German international Anika Kran, who's at centre-back tonight. Paris Saint-Germain flashing the cash, thanks to a Qatari royal family in both the men's and the women's game. There's Anika Kran, another World Cup winner in 2007, she played 90 minutes in that final. 
Lampone sends it long, and this is what the United States are being forced to do again, as they did on Saturday. Failing to play through the centre of the park into the wide areas. OK, they're being forced to go long again, aren't they? Well, I think they're actually respecting Germany way too much. The back line is not pushing up high. The wing backs of O'Hare and La Palma are getting high. And right now, the reason why Germany is so strong is when they attack, they box you in. In a way that if the ball comes out in a first or second, they're organized and they just keep coming and coming and coming. You have to make the decisions, make a decision, get in advanced positions where they're sitting in no man's land. Carly Lloyd won the challenge. And in the end, it's Megan Rapino who was penalised, and as Lloyd was advancing towards goal, Heather O'Reilly on the right-hand side had her arms waving furiously. She had a bit of space. Here's Heather O'Reilly, scored a very important goal against Germany. In the 2004 Olympic semi-final in Athens, a 99th-minute winner in the semi-final, the US, of course, went on to take the gold medal. Mita. Rosonic. Laude drifting into a nice position along the back line of the United States. But they've won it back here through Shannon Box and now Rapino. Different wavelength to Heather O'Reilly that time. Interception <laughs> came in from Babette Pater. Sitting on the field, you get to hear Shannon Box, number seven, demanding the ball. She's sitting in that center spot. She wants to be the one to change the point of attack with five and ten yard passes instead of Megan Rapino hitting a 15 yard pass that's easy to read. Nice move from the Pelbe. One for Pop to chase. Rampone equal to it though. Here's Hope Solo. 129th international appearance for Hope Solo tonight. Carly Lloyd scored those. Two goals, very, very important goals in the gold medal match against Japan. Having scored the winning goal in the final in Beijing in 2008. You can see the rain driving down here in East Hartford. Not dampening the spirits of those in the stands, though. Watching that right there is the trigger for Germany to pressure is when the ball goes wide. They were waiting for Amy LaPelba to get the ball, and then they jump on her with one player on her and one player anticipating, and that was Pop, where the ball would go. The United States can stop that by playing quicker tempo. Take one touch, play it. Don't take a touch, look up. But I think, again, they are respecting Germany a little bit too much, a little bit nervous, and right now that's, you know, that's hurting them. The voice of Kate Margraf, 201 appearances for the U.S. women's national team, twice a gold medal winner. Won the World Cup in 1999, played 120 minutes in the final, that famous final of the Rose Bowl against China, in slightly better conditions, Kate, than you're experiencing between the benches tonight. Oh, it's scorching hot. I think I had heat stroke. It was like 120 on the field. Box with a flick on, heavy chance by Gersley, draws the foul. Part of the reason why the Germans are so good is they're not intimidated by, intimidated by anyone, but also because the physical nature that they play defensively in every single challenge, they challenge like the Americans do. They put their body into it, they put their arms up to protect themselves, and they are not intimidated physically by anyone in the world. From home, drives it down the center of the field. Riley getting involved. Come by one back. But once again, tied it up by the German centre backs. Fencing. Bartusiak. Feist and able to bring that ball under control. Lloyd just second to it. Pater got an important touch, but Shannon Box doing what she does best, just tidying things up appropriately for tonight, mopping things up just in front of the back four. She serves as a shield for this team. She wins balls in the air, but also she sits and tries to perfect 
protect that back line and lock off passing channels. But right now, there's too much space, and they're always in transition because the U.S. hasn't been able to connect more than two or three passes. 35 years old now, Shannon Box. She will be 38 during the next World Cup. I spoke to her before a recent game against Australia. She says, I want to carry on. She's got Canada 2015 in mind. Rosonic into the area. Wonderful turn by Mitag. Low cross comes in. In the end, excellent defending by Becky Sauerbrunn. And she hasn't put it out for a corner. It's a throw in with Alexandra Pop on the scene. Rubino. Very difficult for Heather O'Reilly to keep that ball in play. Right now the United States needs to get their outside backs higher, play to them, get it back, and then have Shannon Box and Carly Lloyd check into that space, that gap, and then turn, have them set play. Allowing them to turn, they can see the whole field and hopefully play defeat and slowly build the game up and move their entire team out of their own defensive end. There is Carly Lloyd. She could be the wild card tonight, Kate, couldn't she? We saw in the gold medal match, particularly with the second goal, when she drove down the center of the field against Japan and scored with a wonderful arrow-like right-footed drive into the corner. That position, the attacking central midfield position for this U.S. team, be it Lauren Chaney or Carly Lloyd, is that the secret to U.S. success? And how did they, tonight is Carly Lloyd, get into the game more? Well, Carly Lloyd thrives when she has a lot of space to dribble into, but she is a great player, and of great players, you want to expect more out of them. Like here, turning and playing in. I think the next evolution for her is just to have a higher rated conversion where that actually goes straight into Alex Morgan's path. But the fact that she's turning is a bit of an evolution. She's so good at it, she just needs to be encouraged to do it more. She scored four goals in the Olympic Games. You get to see Alex Morgan getting a little bit upset with the physical play of the Germans. I think that took her out of the game on Saturday a little bit. She wasn't as impactful as normal. She has to get used to that. This will be her life forever. Everyone now knows her. She's not a surprise entity anymore. They're going to try to manhandle her because they can't compete with her with her speed or her agility. Carly Lloyd just picked up the ball on the corner of the penalty area. She's starting to find the game a little bit more. And there's Alex Morgan. 24 goals in 25 matches in 2012. Four goals in four in the Tribute Tour so far. Recently earned her 50th cap. That was against Australia in Los Angeles. What a duo these have been in 2012. 46 goals between Morgan and Wombach. Chasing that record of 55 by Akers and Jennings. Rapino. Force back to box. Box fighting off the attentions of Anya Mitag. Here's Carly Lloyd again, once again getting on the ball. Becky Sauerbrunn. Sprinting down the left-hand side is Kelly O'Hare, and that's opened up the space here for Shannon Box. A solid challenge by Gersling on Alex Morgan. Carly Lloyd. Hater with the interception. Lloyd retrieves well. Solid challenge. Riley O'Reilly into Morgan. And this is much better from the United States. They seem to have had a dose of smelling salts in the early stages here, Kate. 26 minutes into the game and they're getting more physical against the Germans. Well, they're able to have their starting position up the field, so when the Germans win it back, they have so far to go, and they're able to get in better position. They have more time. You have Feist coming in with Lloyd. Lloyd is so strong on the tackles. Very rarely, after she goes into a challenge, is she the one laying on the ground. Into the penalty area it goes. Lloyd's Morgan, some trickery from her.
Shannon Box. Plenty of red and white stripes forward here for the United States. She draws the foul. Simone Lauder with the foul. Excellent period here for the United States. Can they take advantage? Nadine Angara, the captain, 33 years old, 110 international appearances for Germany. Wants a four woman wall here. Referee Carol Ann Shinar is going to make sure they're 10 yards back. Angara says it's like being in a kindergarten with this younger German side after all the retirements when they disappointed a nation going out in the quarter finals of the World Cup last year on home turf. Rapino drives it in, it's going to be too high. US Soccer on NBC is brought to you by Panasonic Tough Pad Tablet, Fearless. And by Century 21. Century 21 is the official real estate company of the US national teams. There's a little bit of frustration there, Kate Margra, from Abby Wambach, but that wasn't a cross from... Megan Rapino on the free kick. Well, not only Abby Wambach, but Shannon Box number seven. You could hear her loudly call for the ball while the wall was being set up going, Pino, Pino. She wasn't being marked far post. Right there, Pino needed to do a better job picking her head up and seeing they had a numbers up advantage in the box. Here's Carly Lloyd again. Shannon Box. Megan Rapino has peeled away to the left-hand side in some space. Well-timed leap by Vincing. Plays for Wolfsburg in Germany. Rapino. And now it's Mita. Again, Carly Lloyd in strongly. She'll continue her run. Found by Morgan, Carly Lloyd having a run at the German back line here, but it's a very strong challenge by Saskia Bartusiak. Well, it's a friendly name only at the moment. Tackles flying in. It's never a friendly when you play Germany, <laughs> ever, because they are the most physical team outside of the Americans that exists in the top 10 in the world. Wonderful ball inside by Rapino to box into the feet of Abby Wombat. This is nice play by the United States. One touch stuff. Rapino has Kelly O'Hare on her outside. Uses her to turn inside. Rampone. It was effective whilst it was being played short there for that little spell of passing. Back on the floor it is now. Box slides it through. Morgan, one back! Didn't connect that time. But that's super play by the United States. All this build-up occurs because they have players on both touch lines. You get to see some inner passing. Shannon Box plays a ball into the gap. Alex Morgan runs onto a quick touch. The ball is a little bit behind Wambach, which is the reason why she didn't get much power on it. Nadine Anger is showing why she is one of the best goalkeepers in the world for Germany because she held onto a ball, which is so difficult in these conditions. She scored that early goal in the second minute at Toyota Park on Saturday. It was only the second time in 59 games that Abby Wambach has scored in the first half, and the United States did not go on to win the game. They're now 57-0-2 when Wombach scores in the first half. By the way, overall, 94-2-6 when Abby Wombach is on the score sheet. But she doesn't care about records. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll mention it for her. Rapino. Not fouled, according to referee Chenard. Challenge came in from Brissonic. Germany been outplayed in the last 10 minutes or so. Kelly O'Hara. Shannon Box, Becky Sauerbrunn, back she goes to Hope Solo.
come back, cushions the ball back for Carly Lloyd, a growing influence on the game. Kelly O'Hara in acres of space on the left-hand side. Rapino turns infield. Possibilities here for the United States. Tries to drive the ball through to Alex Morgan, but the United States are still in possession. Amy Lapelda, Megan Rapino come, coming in field to get on the ball. Carly Lloyd, Salbra. Can they turn this dominance and possession into the opening goal of the night here, the United States? Throwing right conceded by Shannon Box. We asked Jill Ellis, the interim head coach of this side, replacing Pia Sundhaga temporarily, about her desires on the top job. And she said straight away, I didn't want the head coach's job. She's the, de the development director at US Soccer. She oversees the under-14s, under-15s and under-17 teams. She was Pia Sundhaga's assistant on the gold medal winning team of 2008. Her eyes more on the future development of US women's soccer. Under-20s world champions. Shannon Box. Straight to Babette Peter this time with Heather O'Reilly scampering down that right-hand side and O'Reilly immediately with a thumbs up to the veteran midfielder. He's on it. Into the penalty area. Corner for Germany. Fourth of the match, speaking of Piers Sundhager. Her first match in charge of Sweden was today, a 3-0 victory over Switzerland. Sweden hosts the European Championships in 2013. Approaching the final ten minutes of the first half here at rain-soaked Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. And we await the opening goal. Verena Feist of Wolfsburg, 23 years old. Came in at half-time for Beringa on Saturday, gets the start tonight. Left-footed near post. Solid challenge for Megan Rapino. Well, the Germans love to target number five, Kron, as well as number nine, Pops. Whoever Kron is, look, that's probably where the ball is going to go first. Now they're going to try to hit it for a place. Deeper service. All the way through. Simone Laude keeps it in play. The tall trees have stayed forward for the Germans. O'Hara with the header clear. One for Rapino to chase. Oh, that's a super piece of skill by Verena Feist. She skips past Kelly O'Hara. Feist to the byline, cuts it back. Opportunity here for the Germans in the penalty area. But they're forced wide again. Good defending by Sauerbrunn. Here comes the cross from Vincing. Excellent double challenge that time by Abby Wambach. Back helping out. She got there ahead of Gersling. Rapino will put some pressure here on Vensing. They're desperately trying to win the ball back, the United States. And that's a ball into nowhere by Lena Gersling. The Germans do such a great job of organizing for the second ball. They win the first one, and they always have someone in close support that's anticipating where that ball is going to go. Right now, the United States is so stretched when they're on their own defensive end and they're clearing it out, they're not able to challenge that second ball. And that's why the Germans' attack is one and then two. It's kind of like an onslaught because they can't get pressure up higher and release quicker. Okay, according to Megan Rapino, literally, the gloves are off. <laughs> they're on the ground in front of you. She gets spicy. Mitak towards Pop. Alexandra Pop. Palm defending from Rampone. And Mitak, left foot drive, is a good one. Half a yard over the bar. Hope Solo had it covered. We watched shooting last night for the Germans, and I was so impressed with how many of them were on frame with such power. Not only the accuracy, Continually, they never really shanked the ball, it never really went over except for the occasional defender taking the shot. But Mitag hit every single one on frame and made the goalkeeper make saves. That's something the Germans wanted to improve from Saturday night. Make the goalkeeper, make Hope Solo have to have a save. Don't hit it right at her, don't hit it over or wide.
reminder, you're watching the teams ranked number one and number two by FIFA in the world. The rankings were introduced in 2003. Only the USA and Germany have ever been number one in all those years. Norway and Brazil have each spent time at number two, but never usurped either of these teams into the number one position. These are the heavyweights of international women's soccer. Well, to many, it was a huge, sorry, Kay, it was sorry. a huge shame that Germany weren't in the Olympic Games. I mean, they hosted the World Cup in 2011, and UEFA used that tournament to send their teams to the Olympic Games. Great Britain were the hosts, of course. They took one of the three European spots, and by losing to Germany in the quarterfinals, they were in trouble. And France and Sweden got the last two spots by reaching the semi-finals. So no Germany ranked number two in the Olympic Games. Mitak. Solid challenge by O'Hara. Correction, they lost to Japan, of course, in the quarter-final of the World Cup. On home soil. But the silver lining of them not qualifying to go to the Olympics is they had this entire year to kind of decide who was going to be that next generation and who they were going to keep of the older one. That's a process that the United States has to start this next year with the new coach and the new calendar starting on January 1st. Becky Sauerbrunn. Germany have it back. Mitag. Nice roll of the right boot to the advancing Luisa Wenzig. Into the box it goes. Pop, edge of the area, looking for support. Mitag, left foot drive. It was always going wide. It's that sweet left foot that equalised at Toyota Park on Saturday in the 14th minute. What was so wonderful, Kate, about the finish was the ball bobbled just before she struck it. And she almost adjusted and half volleyed a little lob over Hope Solo into the back of the net. It was a beautiful technical finish on Saturday. Well, she was just voted the MVP of the Swedish League. And when we talked to the German, the coach, they said, you know, she's a good player. But then she went to Sweden and she found her confidence. So now she is taking those half chances. She's doing things with the ball just automatically because she's not thinking because she believes in herself at this moment. And the best part about it, she's not even left-footed. But look at how well she strikes the ball with both feet. She transferred from uh, Turbine Potsdam, one of the powerhouses of German women's soccer, to FC Malmo in Sweden in December. Germany about shot the USA 8-4 to four with five minutes remaining in the first half. Gersling. O'Hara. A little bit too much on that, on that greasy surface out there for Megan Rapino. Kelly O'Hara played every minute of the Olympic Games, all 570 of them. She assisted on Megan Rapino's second goal against Canada in that epic semi-final. A long-range drive from an angle by Rapino, who also scored that night directly from a corner. It was the game that had absolutely everything, including a hat-trick for Canada's Christine Sinclair. All to no available, uh, avail for the Canadians, who eventually did manage to take the bronze medal. Hanging cross, and Solo plucks it out of the night sky. She made some vital saves, Hope Solo, in the gold medal match, which you can see later on on the NBC Sports Network. A save from a Yuki Ogimi header and a Mana Iwabuchi right foot in the second half spring to mind to preserve the lead for the eventual gold medalist of the United States. Crowd of over 80,000 at the spiritual home of English football, Wembley Stadium that night. It was a very special evening for US women's soccer. The only match of the Olympics that Abby Wambach failed to score in. Loud air. Looking to thread it through to... 
Germany number 15, Verena Feist. And Kelly O'Hara was there. She's on the ball again. Sauber. Fencing with the header. Rapino cushions the ball down towards Shannon Box. Well read by Sauerbrunn. Alex Morgan was calling for the ball to feed and Heather O'Reilly was making a super run in behind her as well, onside. Sauerbrunn starts so much play because she's able to play those short passes. She's so composed, is not afraid to play to players who are being marked. The next evolution for her is to hit those longer balls. Back in 2008, she got brought into the national team, and that was the reason why Pia released her. And then she had such a great WPS season. She was the Iron Woman, played in so many games for the Washington Freedom, and she earned her spot back in because she is so composed, and people love playing with her. But that's that next thing. She's an excellent player, and that's just the little last part of her game she needs to add. Rapino spots the run of Alex Morgan. Deflected cross to the back post! It's the opening goal! And guess who it is? Number 148. Abby Wombach closing in on 150 goals. An extraordinary goal scorer for the United States. Well, all of the United States' best chances are coming from the flank, and Megan Rapino puts a little bit of slot ball into the seam for Morgan to run onto. They are aided by a deflection, but Wombach getting the inside shoulder on that German defender was able to get there first and making something that was just luck with the deflection. Babette Peter wishes that she would have gotten on the inside of Abby Wambach and been touched tight to be able to read her movement. And that is crushing for Germany. This has been a very balanced game and now they're going into halftime, possibly 1-0 down. <laughs> She's only 10 behind Mia Hamm's record now. Mia Hamm with 158 international goals. That'll be one back with 148. You asked her about it yesterday. Okay, after training. Because the goal on Saturday, as we saw against New Zealand in the Olympic Games, she took a gamble on a, an Alex Morgan shot, didn't she? Well, they have and poked it in at the yeah, back post. They have such just mutual relationship. They make each other better because Alex Morgan stretches defenders and back lines and she takes these shots and even if they go wide abby now knows to get on the end of them we call frame the goal make sure you make almost the goal mouth bigger where she can run onto it the rain has intensified free kicks of the united states coming up at half time russ and kate will break down the first half highlights and u.s soccer president sunil galati will join us all that and more on the u.s soccer halftime report presented by century 21 Plenty of questions for Sunil Galati about the future appointment of head coach of this U.S. women's national team. We're into stoppage time at the end of the first half, and that will do it. What a boost before the break for the United States. Abby Wambach with her 148th goal in international soccer. It separates the sides. Half time here at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford. The team ranked number one, the United States, lead Germany number two by a goal to nil. Welcome to the U.S. Soccer Halftime Report, presented by Century 21 on the NBC Sports Network. Welcome back to East Hartford, Connecticut, a rainy night. But a good night for Team USA on a late goal in the first half from Abby Wambach gives the red, white, and blue a 1-0 lead. Here are your first half highlights. And we get to see Shannon Box calling for the ball. She has been so assertive this game. She used to score so many goals through the 04 through 08 on just that play. And finally, she's getting that type of service again. We get to see her again slot Alex Morgan in. And Abby Wambach, unfortunately, the ball's a little bit behind her, isn't able to get enough power on it. Chances for USA were hard to come by, but they took advantage of this one in the 44th minute from Abby Wambach. Well, it's just about converting your chances. And again, the U.S. has been so successful when they get some whip. And Alex Morgan just turns, is aided by a deflection. Wambach does an excellent job of cutting in front of that defender and getting onto the ball. Abby's 148th international goal 
And Kate, the young Germans really pushed USA back into their own territory for much of the first half, yet they find themselves down. Can they bounce back from that, or does USA have the mental edge now? Well, it's going to be a great test for Germany. We'll get to see how good those young players are, how resilient they are. If they are like most Germans, they're not going to be phased. They're going to continue to do what has made them successful. Much more to come from East Hartford, Connecticut. When we come back, the president of U.S. Soccer, Sunil Gulati, will join us on set to answer some very important questions. Welcome back to the U.S. Soccer Halftime Report presented by Century 21. Red, white, and blue goes by the wayside a little bit in favor of the Ponchos on a rainy night in Hartford, Connecticut, USA, up 1-0 on an Abby Wambach goal at the half. Welcome back, Russ Taylor, Kate Markrab, joined now by Sunil Gulati, the president of U.S. Soccer. And Sunil, thank you for joining us. We spoke about a month and a half ago. You said you were putting a list together for the next head coach of the U.S. Women's National Team. How small is that list now? Well, we had about 25 to 30 people that we looked at seriously. Uh, and that list is at seven, seven people that we interviewed. And I think hopefully in the next uh, 10 days, we'll be able to narrow that down to one and, uh, and get it going. Has there been one or two candidates that have emerged out of having excellent interviews from the questions you guys posed? Well, a number of them did very well. We were actually very impressed overall with the level of uh, responses we got, both in the interviews and interest to start with. Some of those coaches are American-based. Some of those are international-based. So overall, I've been very pleased with the process in terms of the, the quality of candidates we've had in front of us. How important is it? to you to get that one within the next 10 days then? Uh, well, it, that's always been our target, the end of October, but we don't have any uh, any official games in the next few months, so we want to make sure we get it right. Jill is available to us going beyond this month if we need to, to for this particular team, but my guess is we're going to be done by uh, or ready by November 1st. I hope so. Well, some of the best coaches in America are college coaches, and they have incredible compensation packages. Are you guys willing to match that level of compensation of, like, an FSU, of UNC, in order to get a quality coach? We've had some of the best college coaches apply talk to us. Um, this is the, these are the best players in the world behind me. So any coach that isn't challenged by the possibility of getting an Olympic gold medal by winning a world championship while still protecting their interests of their family, including compensation, quality of life, I think we've got the right list. Getting a coach is one thing. Having a place for these players to play domestically is another issue. How close are we to seeing a women's professional league set up for next year? We've been working very hard on that uh, with a number of investors and our friends at the Canadian Soccer Association, and I I think over the next 10 days in that same sort of time frame we'll have some interesting things to say there as well it's very important that we've got a place to play not only for this group of players but for the next 20 and 40 and 60 and I think we'll accomplish that now will you guys encourage players going overseas or will our contracts be tied to staying domestically no the, the players that want to play for the national always have the opportunity to do that regardless of where they're playing we've had players playing overseas in the past we're certainly going to encourage them to be part of this league and from everything I've heard from them and the player, people that represent them, most of them want to do just that. They want to help us build the game in the United States. They want to be available to our new coach for as many games as we want to play. So I think you'll see most of them staying home. Sunil, quickly over to the men's side. They've just advanced to the hexagonal, the next round of World Cup qualifying. What's your assessment of Jurgen Klinsmann's efforts with this team in the first round of qualifying? You know, obviously we had a couple of bumps along the road. That's always the case. Winning games in Guatemala and Jamaica and so on is never easy. So we've had all of this uh, gut-wrenching experience, except if we beat Russia, he'll have the best record of any coach in a given year ever. So I think it's been a good year. We're not pleased with everything that's happened along the way. But the main goal, qualify for that next round. Jurgen's now got a few months to implement some of the other things he wants to do. And I think you'll see this team get better. Sunil Galati, president of U.S. Soccer. Sunil, thank you very much for your time. When we come back, second half kickoff from East Hartford, Connecticut. USA 1, Germany nothing. You've been watching the U.S. Soccer Halftime Report, presented by Century 21 on the NBC Sports Network. Well, you just saw a preview of the all-new Costas tonight with Bobby Valentine, a first interview since he and the Red Sox parted ways at the end of the Major League Baseball season. Bob is with you after our game here tonight at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Welcome back to today's international friendly between the United States and Germany, presented by Panasonic Tough Pad. 
Let's head down to Kate Margraff between the benches at field level, covered by an umbrella. Thank goodness, Kate. What are you looking forward to in this second half? Well, you add Lauren Cheney, so that means you're going to get someone who can turn on the ball, but they're going to continue to want to use that width. I just talked to Jill Ellis, the interim head coach. She says we need to get around them more, but we can only do it when Shannon Box and Carly Lloyd touch the ball and set that whole entire development of play up. Lauren Cheney's in for Megan Rapino as a half-time change, the only one that Jill Ellis has made. Two changes for the Germans. Jennifer Marojan there. Number 14 and number 17, Viola Uderbrecht, are into the game. For number six, Simone Lauder, and number nine, Alexandra Pop. Kate, I would imagine, as we see the United States break away at the start of this second half, but Alex Morgan is offside. I'd imagine that Anya Mitag will go to, as the furthest forward, the, the main striker for this German side, with the massively talented Jennifer Marojan in behind her in attacking midfield. Well, number 14, Marojan, is special. That's what her coaches say. When I talked to Ali Krieger, the USA International this week, she plays with her and said she's the best player on our team, and she's only 20 years of age. And here she is for the first time since coming on as a substitute. Onto the left foot, Marojan. Doesn't quite get hold of it this time, but there's a sneak preview of perhaps what's to come from the 20-year-old of Hungarian descent. Won the golden ball as the best player at the under-20s FIFA World Cup Finals. Of course, Germany beaten by the USA in Tokyo in the summer by a goal to nil. She made her Bundesliga debut in Germany, aged 14 years and seven months. Scored her first goal, aged 15 years and four months. Her ninth cap for Germany in international soccer. Look out for her, Mita. That's intercepted by Sauerbrunn. It's been very neat and tidy with her defensive work tonight. One back score of the only goal of the night so far, 148th in international soccer. O'Hara with the header clear. It was Pater with the cross. Fencing. Beaten to it this time. Lauren Chaney onto the field as a substitute at half time, taking up the position slightly alien to her on the left hand side of midfield. Normally plies her trade in the centre of the park. Well, the United States usually does not care where Lauren Cheney plays because she will have a free role, very similar to Tobin Heath and Megan Rapino. They may stay wide and start wide in the system, but the style of play is interchanging. Morojan beat on that time by... Oh, no, she's going to get it. There's been a mistake by Christy Rampone. Morojan is clean through here. Then she leveled it at 1-1. The substitute, Morojan, 1-1. Christy Rampone slipped. It allowed the youngster... Clean through on goal, and Marojan made absolutely no mistake. A fourth international goal for her, and we are level at Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Well, the conditions are so slippery. She takes a touch, and it gets away from Marojan, making something, being in the right place at the right time. Look at her calm and composure. She didn't shoot it early. She got that ball so close to Hope Solo. But on that last touch, far enough away where she could get it wide and just place it on the other side of her. What makes her so special, it doesn't matter what the pressure is. If it's one player, no player, three, she still does whatever she wants on the ball. And that's why they consider her the next big star for the German team. You don't see many mistakes from Christy Rampone. That was one of them. No, she is captain dependable. Very rarely do you see that. And it's a sign of the... Well, not probably reading how close Morosian is to her, but also because the weather. Burning ball to the outside of the boot from Lauren Cheney, looking for Alex Morgan. And again, it's a feisty start to this second half. Throwing to the United States. The team's ranked number one in the world, the United States. The gold medal winners from London 2012 against the team ranked number two in the world and European champions, Germany. Super cross that time over the head by Lauren Chaney. But Ojan again, looking for Mita. Becky Sauerbrunn with the header clear. Viola Uderbrecht. Right it goes to Verena Feist. 
Low cross comes in. It's nicely watched by Salbram. Communication from Christy Rampone. There was no danger lurking at the far post. Well, Feist, number 15, is a young player. She's getting significant amount of time because this is a test for Germany. They want to see how the younger players are going to do. So they have Mittag, Feist, Morosian now in that little triangle up top. And this is a picture for the future of a possible combination and partnerships. Abby Wombach is on the ground. You don't see that very often. It was Lena Gersling with the physical challenge on Wombach. The Germans complaining that was shoulder to shoulder. Sylvia Neid looking on. Nadine Angara, the experienced captain and goalkeeper from Frankfurt. One of nine players from FFC Frankfurt in this squad. Rampone with the service into the penalty area. Drive comes in from the edge of the area from Heather O'Reilly. Left footed over the bar. In fact, it's Kelly O'Hara, excuse me, getting forward. Well, Kelly O'Hara is a converted forward. She's used to scoring goals and having the ball pop out at her. That was excellent organization by the United States. They did not win the first ball, but the, Kelly O'Hara sat in that pocket to pick up the second ball. And unfortunately, she hits it as the ball was bouncing up, so it sails over the crossbar. Morojan. Udebrecht. Interesting story, Viola Udebrecht, who's on the field. Number 17 as a half-time substitute from Wolfsburg. Back in the Germany team, we chatted to her yesterday after a six-year hiatus. She was part of the 2003 World Cup winning squad. Told her she always had a hope of return. And she worked so hard to get back into the squad. There were a plethora of retirements after the 2011 World Cup finals, which was such a disappointment to the Germans. She kept at it, and she's got a recall. Started on Saturday in Chicago. Well, what's old is new is how they put it, is they just gave her another chance in a different environment. She's matured a couple years, and they need her leadership because they are trying to integrate the young with the old. And she is a fantastic person that they learn from because she is comfortable leading people. Babette Pater with a throw-in. Picked on by Morgan, miscontrolled there by Abby Wombach, who looks disappointed with herself. Louisa Fencing. Rosonic coming in off that right flank for the Germans. Solid challenge though by Shannon Box. O'Hara. Pushed back from Morgan. Cheney to chase. She ensures there's a throw in here for the United States. Lauren Cheney earning her 77th international cap tonight. Maybe just joining us. He missed an explosive end to the first half. Abby Wambach inching closer to Mia Ham's all time international scoring record. Goal number 148 for her in this closing stages of the first half. That's the list. Look at the goals per game average as well. It's extraordinary. First time cross. There's one or two German players. And it's Morosian with the shot. They have one or two over at the far post that time. Morosian doesn't need a second invitation to have a strike on goal. Well, the Germans, when they do, when they start to build the ball up, they get so many numbers around the ball. So even though that's a bit of a longer touch, Morosian is so close to Odebrecht, she's able to hit a one-time shot. She did not challenge Hope Solo. It was an easy save for Hope to make. Carly Lloyd takes control, but then gives the ball away. Razonic. Come home with the clearance, but straight, straight back to the number 10, Linda Razonic. Anika Kran. 
Body goes on the right hand side to Luisa Vensing, the fullback. Gersley chips into the area, but that's easy for Hope Solo. Once again, she's so good at distributing the ball quickly this time towards Morgan, who skillfully stayed off the centre back and picked up the loose ball. And it's a free kick being won by Alex Morgan. Good play by the United States, direct but effective. And a yellow card to number 20, Lena Gersling of VFL Wolfsburg, the 26 year old. Well, all the Germans' numbers were in the United States half. It was excellent recognition by Hope Solo just to punt it long. And even though it's two on four, and the Germans have the number advantage, when you have Abby Wambach in the air as an option and Alex Morgan on the ground, they can make something out of nothing. That is why they're so magical together. Decisions, decisions. Carly Lloyd and Shannon Box. Here's Lloyd. Dinks it to the back post towards Abby Wambach, and it was read very well by the German defence. That's exactly what didn't happen with that free kick in the first half with Megan Rapino, who had a shot at goal. This time the service was to the back post towards the head, the forehead of Abby Wambach. Corner kick to the United States. A double substitution about to be made here by the home side. Heather Mitz and Rachel Bueller will come into the game. Straight swap for Amy Lapelbet. Mitz will take her place at right back. And Bueller will go in for Kelly O'Hara. Rachel Bueller, a left footer, could go over to the left back position. And they're both in for this corner kick. Only Christy Ramponi stayed back here. Deep service towards Morgan. And he cleared to the edge of the area. Hooked forward by Heather Mitz. But that'll be a goal kick. She is Heather Mitz, 34 years old. 132 international caps for her now. Three Olympic gold medals at home. The two substitutions were made because they're trying to give some fresh legs. They need to get their outside backs in advance of the back line. So they push Germans wingers way back. And that's why they made the sub. You have to remember the Americans are not in peak physical condition. They're winding down their season. And this is a way that Jill Ellis thinks they can get some width, open up gaps in the middle and have more possession of the ball. Six substitutions allowed for each side under the conditions of a friendly international. Heather O'Reilly, dummy by Abby Wambach. Heather win by Lauren Cheney. Wambach battling, just tugs the arm though of the defender that time, Abby Wambach. And we were talking about goal scoring a few moments ago. Abby Wambach with her 148th. A reminder of that fascinating conversation we had with Abby yesterday. Not normally one for records, but she wants that record between herself and Alex Morgan. They've now got 47 goals in a calendar year, 2012. Michelle Akers and Karen Jennings with a record of 55, including all four between them in the first ever game between these two sides, the US and Germany, in Kaiserslautern in that year, 1991, a 4-2 victory for the United States. And what I love about history is it ties the past and the present. And those two stats and those people involved are so similar. Michelle Akers played very much like Abby Wambach. Big physical presence. Karen Jennings Gabara, so quick, so fast, incredibly agile. And this could be 48. Abby Wambach is through. Oh! Not this time. Supervision from Carly Lloyd. It was a slip by the young right back, Vensing, and it was one on one. It was one back against Angara. Well, the game is getting stretched, which means that their more direct balls will have a higher chance of success. There's not as many numbers around the ball to defend. Credit Nadine Angara, the goalkeeper from Germany, reading the play, realizing she had to come out, cut down that angle. An excellent vision by the goalkeeper. Excellent end-to-end -end stuff here. In East Hartford, Connecticut, in monsoon-like conditions, the crowd undeterred. Cheers and shrieks every time the United States get near the opposition goal. Approaching the hour mark, all level at 1-1.
Mitz. There's the cross. Rojan. Nice outlet ball to Verena Feist, who couldn't control it, but they've still got it, Germany. Rojan runs it out of play. Heather O'Reilly. Peggy Sauerbrunn has gone to left back. Rachel Bueller has taken up her trademark position alongside Christy Rampone in the centre of defence. Rojan with the elaborate flick. He tag. Battling away. Well, that's what the United States needs to do. They only have one front runner on them of number 11, Mitag, and Marosian sitting in that gap. They have a numbers advantage. They can release one of those center backs and put pressure on the ball, and that's what happens. You can't make it easy for Germans to play through you. Alice Morgan was offside. Score of the latest ever goal in a FIFA competition, women or men. 122 minutes and 23 seconds, Alex Morgan, that header. Admittedly, not a strength of hers, she says, but she was effective when she needed to be. Heather O'Reilly with the cross against Canada, that epic 4-3 victory. There's only one goal behind April Heinrich for 13th all-time on the international list. Alex Morgan with 34 international goals in 52 appearances. Riley. Robert Heath preparing to enter the match for Heather O'Reilly, we're hearing. It's a very skillful player, Tobin Heath. All out of play. Tobin Heath's taken her time to get to the halfway line. It reminds me of our conversation we had with her yesterday. She is a very relaxed persona. She just kind of hangs out. But once you get talking about the gold medal and what that meant, you could just see the shift. She was so proud, was happy to be here, happy to play in these games, to celebrate with the fans. But that's the only time you see her come out of her very, very relaxed shell. She said coming back and beating Japan, having lost them on penalties in the World Cup final, barely a year earlier, if it was a movie script, to be turned down as being implausible. And then she added dude after. <laughs> And a couple of awesomes. <laughs> she provided three assists in the Olympic Games against France, Colombia and New Zealand. And that's a Super Bowl three towards Alex Morgan. Morgan running at the German defence. Repelled by Anika Kran, but it's a corner kick. The United States is Sorry, playing Dave. so much more direct, back and through. And Alex Morgan timing her run perfectly, creating a good angle. And Bartusiak, excellent with her body. Knows she can't keep up with Morgan, but she gets an arm into her and disrupts the play and allows her team to organize. Even though it's a corner kick, they can get everyone back, organize, and hopefully get it out if you're their German fan. There's the change then. Tobin Heath into the game for Heather O'Reilly. And here comes the corner kick. To the area, oh, and it's just headed wide. The goalkeeper, Nadine Angara, was beaten by Abby Wambach, and she just narrowly, narrowly failed to get it on target. This incredible service to Tess Nadine Anger coming out, and Abby Wambach, unfortunately, just loses sight of the ball, but Abby will put her body into anything, and Nadine Angara called Wambach a big elephant. She always says she can hear her coming. No disrespect intended. No disrespect intended. <laughs> But she knows what she's going to get, and it's such a great challenge. She's an incredible goalkeeper, Anger, so good and widely respected because of all the clean sheets that she keeps. But Wombach, she will challenge anyone and everything to get her team the win. We asked her what was her approach against Abby Wombach, and she said as well, just get ready for the crash. <laughs> that was an example of it. Gersling. On the overlap is Vensing outside of Rizonic. Who skips that's one challenge, still Linda Brazonic towards the edge of the area. Here's an opportunity for the Germans. Drive comes in, it's repelled, parried by Hope Solo. Mittag with the right footer.
Hasn't been called upon too many times so far tonight, Hope Solo, but equal to the task there. Excellent record this calendar year. It's been a wonderful year for US women's soccer. Mueller with the clearance. Hursling with the header. Mueller the substitute again. Morosian into Brissonne. Morosian into the penalty area. She's looked incredibly dangerous since coming onto the field. But she won't be able to keep that one in play. Goal kick to the United States. And let's take another look at Hope Solo save. Well, the Germans never usually go alone. There's always lots of interplay. Brezenik finds Mittag, takes a look, and she shoots it with her right foot. Very rarely does Hope ever punch out a ball. Solo must have thought, as a goalkeeper, this ball's coming in, I better punch it out. Brezenik plays it into space. Mittag takes a good touch forward to get her hips around the ball towards goal. And Hope Solo has to punch it out. And luckily, for the United States, they had defenders recovering because in this type of weather, you have to anticipate rebounds and be the first ones there. Lauren Cheney with the turn, gives the ball away. Here come Germany again. Towards the edge of the penalty area, another shot comes in. It's another save by Solo, and onto her feet she gets just in time. Morozhan is playing very well indeed. It was Viela. Udebrecht, who was trying to pounce on the rebound. The Germans win a turnover in midfield, and Morosian takes a touch, buys herself a little bit of time and angle. Hope gives up the rebound, and Germany does an excellent job. Udebrecht, number 17, running on for it. Oh, Alex Morgan at the other end. All action here in East Hart, and here's an opportunity. Back post, go! Toman Heath restores the lead for the United States. End to end action. The value of Hope Solo in goal. And wonderful from Heath at the other end. Side footed with the right foot, right into the corner. The United States lead by two goals to one. Well, the play starts in midfield. The United States have been more direct. Alex Morgan curls her run, and then cuts it in to buy an angle. It cuts back. And Tobin Heath being in the slot runner, she delays her run, which buys her time to read the path of the ball. The ball is deflected, bounces right to her, and coolly and calmly just slots it. Tobin Heath is so technical on the ball that she can basically put it wherever she wants. And this time she stays composed, her technique comes out. And if you're Germany, you just had two excellent attacks that has to kill some of your momentum. The look of anguish on Carly Lloyd's face there as that ball was just taken away from her. She'd have had an open goal. But I'm sure she then looked round in relief and ecstasy to see Tobin Heath available on the back post to calmly slot in her seventh international goal. This is her 56th appearance. Her last goal came against Sweden back in June. Here comes Germany again. You get a sense that's not the last goal of the evening. Gerslin drives it. U.S. Soccer on NBC is brought to you by Panasonic Tough Pad Tablet, Fearless. And by Century 21. Century 21 is the official real estate company of the U.S. national teams. All to play for in the final 21 plus minutes here. A 1-1 draw between these sides on Saturday at Toyota Park in Bridgeview, Illinois. This fan tribute tour. It's game five, an 8-0 victory over Costa Rica in Rochester, New York. Two games against Australia, a 2-1 victory in Los Angeles, a 6-2 thrashing in Colorado, and that 1-1 draw on Saturday. Budapest. Turned by Alex Morgan, who's dropped a little deeper to collect the ball. Shannon Box, asking a lot of Abby Wambach. Abby knows she is not going to get onto that ball. Wambach, her strength is not running on to everything. She's deceptively quick in five, six-yard lateral movements as well as vertical, but that's really an Alex Morgan type of run. She scored in the first five games in London 2012. 
Absolutely terrific performance found by Carly Lloyd on Verena Feist. Free kick to Germany. Scored the winner in the 2004 Olympic gold medal match against Brazil in extra time as well, Abby Wombat. 32 years old. Only Carly Lloyd has scored an Olympic final since. Babette Pater. Udebrecht over the top, but Feist hadn't continued her run. Germany's qualifying route for the European Championships next year was a good one for them. 28 points out of 30. Very convincing. The only blemish, a 2-2 draw with Spain. Germany have won the last five European Championships dating back to 1995. Seven in total. Twelve nations will take part in Sweden next July. Here they come. Looking for an equaliser. What a save by Hot Solo. There's the second attempt and she forces that one wide as well at her near post. Morojan continues her fine form since coming onto the field. Well, again, it's another turnover by the United States, and they're, they're not making Germany earn it. Goes wide, Morojan with a quick burst of speed, gets in front of Rampone, and then follows up her shot. Hope Solo comes up big, covers her near post, stays big, and only goes down once she knows where the ball is going. Excellent right-handed save. Here comes the service into the penalty area. Udebrecht can't control at the back post, but a nice piece of skill to get past one back. Here comes the cross. It's dangerous, it's still there. Vincent trying to turn and get a right foot shot away, but failed to do so. Here's one for Alex Morgan to chase. But it's out of play. Okay, the reactions of Hope Solo then as well in these slippery conditions. Couldn't have been expected to catch that attempt at the, at the first attempt from Morojan, but she was quickly up to the ball and scooped it out of play that's experience for you isn't it as well that is experience because she isn't a traditional boxer she doesn't usually come out and punch the ball with either one hand or two so that's a sign that she's recognizing how slippery it is. Oh, foot raised there by heather mitts unintentionally i'm sure she'll get a card here i think heather mitts the referee calling for the trainers to come on as verena feist has taken a blow to the head the mitts has remained down as well. Abby right now is arguing with the referee. Doesn't believe that Heather Mitts did that intentionally. Feist has been involved in so many of these. She puts her head down in a dangerous spot. But at the same time, no one expects a foot that high coming towards your head. Part of that is you wonder if Feist, the inexperience, not realizing that someone is coming forward at that speed that you face at the full senior level. But Heather Mitz has to be careful. If I'm the referee, I would give a yellow card. Okay, you're between the benches down there at field level. Is that a yellow card I see in the referee's hand? That is a yellow card. And originally, Wambach was starting to argue with her right after the collision. I understand, and I, I would give a yellow card as well, because you have to protect the players in these slippery conditions. The balls are going to bounce everywhere. The first reaction can't be to put your foot up. So both players shaken up. Feist looks the more likely to come on the field immediately. He's lining up on the halfway line. Pater with the free kick. Flat service. And easy for Hope Solo. Immediately springs off the byline, looking to release... Maybe Alex Morgan, but decides against it this time. The United States are playing with 10 men, and you have all the coaches with their arms around Heather Mitts. When she hit the ground, you could hear it from where I am, 15 yards away. So even though she contacted Feist, they both came at it trying to win the ball. It was unintentional. The challenge had a fractious point to it. But... She hit it so hard, I'm wondering if she might have incurred some kind of wound where she doesn't feel like she can go back in. Well, Heather Mitz is preparing herself to re-enter the game. Feist is already there. <laughs> oh, 
Don't forget, following the game tonight on the NBC Sports Network, an all-new Costas tonight, that interview with Bobby Valentine, the first since being fired by the Boston Red Sox. Jeremy Roenick as well with his views on the NHL lockout. And USA Today columnist Christine Brennan with some very strong thoughts on Lance Armstrong in the news at the moment. That's following our broadcast from Rensselaer Field. And all new Costas tonight on the NBC Sports Network. 15 minutes remaining. USA 2, Germany 1. And what has been an enthralling encounter between the number one side of the world, according to the FIFA rankings, the United States, gold medal winners at London 2012, and the European champions, perennial Euro champions, Germany ranked number two in the world. It's had the intensity of a World Cup quarter-final at times. Tobin Heath, who's put the United States ahead, trying to get a toe in towards Cheney, and here's Shannon Box. Sauber, Bueller, Rampone, whose slip allowed Marojan through for the equaliser in the opening minutes of the second half. Antonis from Hope Solo makes it into the Germany half. Alex Morgan, desperate to get on the score sheet tonight. Box, Lloyd, sustained possession here for the United States. Tobin Heath, nice piece of skill from Heath. Got a runner ahead of her, but she took a little bit too long that time. Carly Lloyd had made a nice break from midfield. Had next back on the field. Rampone. Bueller. United States playing their 27th game of the year, record of 23-1 and 2, unbeaten in 17 games. Their only defeat, 1-0 to Japan in March at the Algarve Cup in Portugal. That was the only time the United States have been held scoreless in 2012, including tonight 103 goals in 27 nearly matches at almost four per game. saw Lena Lutzen, a 19-year-old, preparing to come into the game. Well, there's possibly an opportunity there, I was going to say, for advantage to be played, but the free kick's gone the other way, has it? No. The referee corrects herself. So Lutzen coming in, and Anya Mitag, the goal scorer on Saturday, is out. Lutzen, another member of the under 20s World Cup silver medal side. She played 90 minutes in the final against the USA. It was the only goal that Germany conceded in the entire tournament. And it was enough for the USA to register a 1 0 win. She plays for Bayern Munich in Germany. Recovered from a recent Achilles problem. Rojan again looking very dangerous. Four as it goes towards Lutzen, edge of the area. Sauerbrunn back defending. And that's what Lotsen can do for you. She had seven goals in the Youth World Cup because she's so fast, and that's what they're bringing in. They're trying to give her some time. She was injured, so she could not play on Saturday. But she's quick, and she's the fastest forward this German team has. And they're going to use that to play her into gaps like that, try to stretch that back line in the United States and open up some space to play in the United States midfield. Nika Kran into the Germany midfield. Lotsen with a... This place pass this time, looking for Luisa Fencing. The test here for the United States, can they close out this game? Or even perhaps add to their advantage. Tobin Heath was earmarked by Pia Sundhager. A wide player, Tobin Heath, is perhaps having a future in the number 10 role, the schema role, behind the main striker. The position she's in now, making a run towards the left-hand side. Here she is, Tobin Heath. Runner inside of her is Alex Morgan. Heath working against Kran. Here's Alex Morgan. Trying to get it back to Tobin Heath. Fencing was back defending. Alex Morgan wins the ball back for the United States. Heath has to be careful not to stray into an offside position. Throw in. Tobin Heath said, yeah. She quite fancies that position as she matures as a player. 23 years old now, Tobin Heath. There she is. 
She'll get a lot more of the ball, a lot more touches on the ball if she plays in that position. Does she have the potential to play there, Kate, do you think? Well, Tobin Heath is the most technical player besides Megan Rapino on this roster, and she's so comfortable on the ball. She played that in college at UNC, and she can put texture on it. We saw that in the Australia game. She played Alex Morgan in with a little outside of the football. Right now, there are numerous potential number 10s for the United States because we are developing, as a country, so many technical attacking center mids. Ten minutes remaining. Heather Mitz. Shannon Box tied to the right touch line, having switched flanks is Lauren Cheney. Be one back with the foul. We mentioned that five of the Germany squad played in that U20s World Cup final. Three of them now on the field. There's Lena Lertzen, the goal scorer Jennifer Marojan, Luisa Vincing, the right fullback, the future of German women's soccer. Marojan curls it in. It's a corner. Uda Bretz was lurking on the corner of the six-yard box. Right now, Hope Solo is asking Heather Mitz to sit in that hole so she has a better line of sight. Heather Mitz is blocking her vision. You can see Solo talking to Mitz, saying, next time this happens. Come on, come on. with the seventh corner kick for the Germans. And there won't be an eighth. Goal kick. And Ika Kram. The closest to it for Germany. This might be a matchup of one versus two, but both these teams aren't at full strength. Germany, they're incorporating a lot of younger players. They're testing them to see how they can be. And the United States, at this moment, they're not peaking for an event. They're not in preparation for something like the Germans who have the Euros in the summer of 2013. Well, a fascinating interview with Sunil Galati, the president of US Soccer at halftime of our broadcast as Sydney LaRue prepares herself to come into the game. This is going to get even more interesting. Sonu Galati mentioning that a new coach may be in place by November the 1st, and uh, there may be developments on a new women's league in the next 10 days as well. Interesting that Sonu Galati mentioned that they were working on a new league in conjunction with the Canadian Soccer uh, Association. We await news of both of those situations. Sydney LaRue, right in front of you there, Kate. He's had a terrific 2012 as well. Heather Mitz, having come in at half-time, but sustained an injury, is out of the game. Sydney LaRue is on. Scored her 10th international goal in that 6-2 morning of Australia in Colorado recently. 10 goals off the bench in 2012. It's a US record. Sydney LaRue was in shock that she had to do a throne because as a forward, you very rarely have to be required to do that. She's playing right back. There's a straight swap. That's some place they actually see her potentially is to play an outside back for this United States team because Jill Ellis said we don't have enough good outside backs in this country and we need to develop them. And this is possibly a look for Sydney LaRue to have a little bit of versatility in your game. We know as a country what she can bring up top. The question is, can she be increase her valuable and her worth to this team by playing another position. It was an offside given against Abby Wambach and the Germany coach Sylvia Nide leapt off her bench to the corner of the technical area wondering why the referee didn't allow play to continue with Germany building a promising attack. Hater. And here's some space for Shannon Box over the top towards Alex Morgan. A miscue with the left foot though by Box. And here's Resnick. Marajan. Still Marajan, onto the left foot. Marajan, oh, and the goal! 
Her second of the night. A potential star of the women's game. Jennifer Marajan makes it 2-2. Two -two. Well, the fifth comes. We get to see Bresnik look up, find Marajan. She takes another touch. She likes to get herself space by touching the angle wide with her touch, and then she gets her hips around it. She can strike a ball with so much force. It will get past any keeper when you hit it like that. That's an excellent shot. And if you're Germany, you've got to be so happy that you get to see your young players perform against the number one team in the world. Well, it often takes something very special to beat Hope Solo, and that was it from Jennifer Marojan. I think Solo got the nearest of touches on it, but not enough to keep it out of the back of the net. Five international goals now for Marojan in her ninth appearance. Her father, Janos, earned four caps for Hungary. She was born in Hungary, in Budapest, moved to Germany as a youngster, and a reminder she scored her first Bundesliga goal at 15. What a star she's going to be. They feel she is so special because she can do anything on the ball, and you get to see how hard she can hit it with her right or left foot. Every time she hit the ball, you could hear it hit. If it missed the goal, you could hear it hit the boards in training yesterday. But she's not phased by the pressure. She does not get uncomfortable, lose her composure when she has one player, two player, three players. And they look to her to help build this youth team and turn and set the example on how to turn it into a successful professional senior level debut. Gersling has been taken off, walked off by the trainers. Kate, you played against Birgit Prince, didn't you? And it, what timing for Germany to have a player like this arrive on the scene. Prinz retired after the 2011 World Cup Finals, 128 goals in 214 appearances. Birgit Prince was amazing because she could run at you with such speed, strength and force. But the difference I see between Merojan and Prince is her vision. She can, she can play herself in, she can feel composed or she can take that angled touch and get the shot off. But more than anything, she can play in her teammates better than Birgit ever could have. There's the story of the night. The United States over the two games have been ahead three times and they've been pegged back three times. Inside the final three minutes. It's been a hugely entertaining night. The crowd have enjoyed it. They've got their money's worth for sitting in the rain for 87 minutes plus so far tonight. And it's eased off for the first time this evening. Sydney LaRue on as a substitute at right back. That's a hope solo. moment we've got Lauren Chaney on the right hand side Tobin Heath is out on the left Carly Lloyd and Shannon Box in the center of midfield all behind Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach Gersling Feist the tackle by LaRue that is incredible defending by a player that is not used to defending wall passes most people that are inexperienced especially someone that plays forward watches the player watches the ball go past her and then that player runs around her. Her recognition that she just needed to quickly turn was pretty impressive. Carly Lloyd trying to run that ball out of defense and she's been caught. Marajan again, right footed dry this time. Straight into Christy Rampone. Gersling, Germany looking for a late winning goal here. Hater joining the attack, but it's ushered out of play by Rampone. 90 seconds, just less than, plus stoppage time remaining. Germany World Cup winners in 2003 and 2007. They beat the United States in the 2003 semi-final by three goals to nil in Portland. They were 2-0 winners over Brazil in the 2007 final. Nine of that squad are on this tour. Ball in towards... The young substitute, Lutzen. Hope Solo gives the ball away. It's a tiring United States. Euler, she gives it away to Gersling. Arajan, fencing of Abel on the right-hand side if they can find her. Here she is. Arajan ahead of her. 
Here's Bresenik. Turns away from danger. Gersley. Vincing. Low ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Harley Lloyd with the clearance, but again it's straight to the foot of a German defender. Now Gersling. Pater. We've had the 90 minutes. Now, two more minutes will be played tonight. A minimum of. Budebrecht. Feist. Sliding challenge is a good one from Sidney LaRue. But no, it's been a just to have been a foul, is it? Or is it a throw in? No, it's a throw in. Marajan. There's a sense of anticipation every time Jennifer Marajan gets on the ball. Feist. Hayter. Uderbrecht. Opens up the field wonderfully well. Right into the stride of Vensing. Tobin Heath is back defending. An important job for Tobin Heath here. They've got four in the box here, Germany. Bersonic can't find Vensing, and that's a waste for Germany. But Shannon Box needs to get rid of this, and in the end it's Tobin Heath. who sorts it out, and it's a goal kick to the United States, and we're inside the final 60 seconds of the minimum of two minutes that have been added on to the end of this game. Will it be honours even for the second time inside a week between these two powerhouses, one and two in the world? The United States can relieve some of the pressure. We've seen some terrific play and some excellent goals. Abby won back with her 148th international goal right at the end of the first half. The 47th goal scored between her and Alex Morgan this year. But I don't think it's going to be enough for victory. Marojan twisting, turning. Marojan again, score of a high-quality double tonight for Germany. So will make a way towards the edge of the penalty area. Udebrecht with a searching cross, but it's too close to Hope Solo. And is that it? The Canadian referee, Shinar, has the whistle to her mouth, and she calls a halt to proceedings. Honours even yet again. The United States unbeaten in 18 games in 2012. The Olympic gold medalist held by the team ranked number two in the world, the European champions, Germany. A hugely entertaining game. No goals tonight for Alex Morgan, but a terrific strike from Abby Wambach before the break. And then once again, the United States went into the lead via Tobin Heath in the second half. Alex Morgan remains on 34 international goals and these two teams will be challenging for major honours for many years to come I'm sure Tobin Heath the second half substitute it was a very calm side footed finish for her seventh international goal her first since June the Marojan goodness me what a player she looks from of Hungarian descent it's only her ninth international appearance tonight. She's now got five goals. She plays for FFC Frankfurt, who were runners-up in the UEFA Champions League a few months ago. And a golden ball as the best player at the under-20 FIFA World Cup, where Germany were runners-up to the United States. Intriguing night, really entertaining stuff. Kate Margraff is with her former teammate, Christy Rampone, pitch side. OK, a marked improvement from Saturday. What was the difference today? I think just, you know, attitude, knowing that it's Germany, not wanting to lose to them, you know, keep our standings high. Um, but just overall, like, when you play a team like that and you don't get too many opportunities to play them, it's let's go after them, and I think the team do well. Now, why is Marjan so good for Germany? Just so crafty. She turns on a dime. She has some speed and vision. So um, I think she has it all. So it's, it's tough to, to keep up with her, especially in a slippery field. But, you know, it takes a team, you know, a team defense. You know, stepping and dropping, and I think we did well for not too many games played together. Well, thank you very much, and Thanks. great game tonight. Okay, Christy, thank you very much indeed. Abby Wambach is marching towards our set. You'll hear from her after the break. Final score, USA 2, 
Germany 2. Coming up in just a little bit, it's Costas tonight. Bob Costas is going to sit down with Bobby Valentine in his very first interview since being fired by the Red Sox. His guests also include the always candid Jeremy Roenick. He'll be talking about the NHL lockout. USA Today columnist Christine Brennan has some very strong thoughts on Lance Armstrong. And he'll have an interview with Vikings punter Chris Cluey, who the New York Times has called the NFL's most interesting man. Costas tonight is coming up next. And then... It's the return to the London series continues as the United States women take on Japan in the gold medal match at 11 p.m. USA and Germany tonight from East Hartford, Connecticut. And there were goals galore started by Abby Wambach in the first half. Well, anything that came from the flanks created something for this American team. Megan Rapino slots the ball in the space. Alex Morgan is aided by a deflection. But Abby Wambach searching for the ball, looking solely for it. Right place, right time. Germany defender did not do a good job of stealing Wambach off. And she's doing a little slip and slide celebration. And in the second half, Chrissy Rampone, unfortunately, loses her footing. And we get to see this touch. Look at the calm and composure of Mirajan. Picks her head up, not even phased by an onrushing Hope solo. And with speed, she attacks the ball, picks her head up, finds her spot, and coolly slots it in. And that made it 1-1, but USA came right back in the 67th minute. And Tobin Heath, the second half sub, doing it. She plays the ball in the space, and what's incredible about this is this last touch under pressure angled, takes the German defender out of it. Tobin Heath, with a delayed run, can read where the service is coming. Carly Lloyd is unable to get a touch on it because Tobin Heath had time to run onto it. She can collect herself, pick out where she wants to go. She has so much skill. When she takes a deep breath, she can make anything happen. Not to be outdone, though, Jennifer Marathon once again for Germany, and wow! Marazan takes that touch away from Rampone and all of a sudden slices it, slams it behind Hope Solo. And that's how it ends. 2-2 between USA and Germany. Russ Thaler, Kate Markraft, joined by Abby Wambach. Abby, how would you rate your team's performance tonight, maybe as compared to Saturday night's game against Germany? Well, you know, the rain made it a little difficult. And to, to be honest, did a little disappointed with the result. I thought that you know, we had the momentum getting that second goal. Tobin makes a, a, a great, you know, Alex makes a great ball and, and Tobin finishes it off. I myself am a little disappointed, but you know, you gotta you gotta understand that this is the victory tour. We haven't been training as much as we did before the Olympics, and Germany's all, you know, they're played in ready for the Euros. So when you're playing in Germany and you know you're not played in as well as you would like, your touch may be not as perfect as, as what you would like it to be. What could have happened differently out there? What would you have liked to ask more of yourself coming in this game? Definitely for, for me and for everybody else, just to be a little bit more confident in the ball. You know, with the rain, it makes it a little bit more difficult to make touches and make touches that, that are good for you, uh, that will set up that next player to, to do well. You know, we were, we were crushing the ball at each other, making it more difficult for ourselves. You know, Germany, this is the kind of weather they play in all year round. So they're comfortable with the wet grass. They're comfortable getting hard balls put into and, and having a solid touch. And right now, we're just a little off, and that's okay. But at the end of the day, we still have high, high standards. We still thought we should have won this game. Abby, Sunil Gulati was on set with us at halftime. He said he expects to narrow his candidates to one, assuming that means you'll have a new head coach by the end of October. November 1st is the target date. How do you react to that? Well, it's exciting. You know, it's a new phase. You know, we're still trying to get past the Pia, the Pia, Rain, and, and now we're moving on to the next coach, whoever that may be. We're excited for the next step. You know, our, our goals are set on World Cup 2015. We got a long way to go before, from now until then. And obviously, we, we're not playing our best soccer right now, but we shouldn't be. We're going to be playing our best, our best soccer for the World Cup. He also said a league might be coming very shortly too. How important would that be for the lead up to 2015? Yeah, we definitely have to look at and see if it's going to be the right kind of lead for for this team. We of course would love to to bring professional soccer back in the United States, but we don't want to take any steps back for the national team. So we have to make the right decisions for each player so that this team can be on the right the right height of the podium come the World Cup. Abby, thanks so much. USA and Germany tied 2-2 here in East Hartford. Abby Wambach opened the scoring for USA with their 148 international goal. We'll be right back from Connecticut.
Major League Soccer continues tomorrow on the NBC Sports Network. Eastern Conference leading Sporting Kansas City can wrap up the number one seed in the East for the postseason as they take on the Philadelphia Union. And this Saturday is a huge day of soccer on the NBC family of networks. First on NBC, Philadelphia Union hosts the New York Red Bulls who are battling for position in the playoffs. DC United and Chicago Fire can go all the way up to number two or fall to four in the Eastern Conference, depending on the outcome of that one. And perhaps a Roger Maris moment in Portland as San Jose's Chris Wondolowski can break the all-time single-season scoring record in Major League Soccer. USA and Germany tied 2-2 in East Hartford, Connecticut. Abby Wambach and Tobin Heath, your goal scorers for the red, white, and blue. Coming up next, it's Costas tonight. And then the return of London run turn to London series continues as the United States women stick on Japan in the gold medal match. For Arlo White and Kate Margraff, I'm Russ Thaler saying so long from East Hartford, Connecticut. You've been watching an international friendly between USA and Germany presented by Panasonic Tough Bad.